Hello, everybody. My name is Jeremiah Karpowitz. I'm the editorial director of Commercial UAV Expo, and I am thrilled to be in front of you today for multiple reasons. As Lisa kind of laid out, uh, the entire drone ecosystem is here. And because of that, we can have conversations and discussions and ask questions in a way that just doesn't work over Zoom or over email. And I have questions about where this industry's at, where it's going, where the technology's at, where the market's at. And there are few better people that I can think of to have that conversation with than Brandon Torres Decklet, who's the CEO of Ag Eagle. Brandon has his foot in the past, present, and future of the space like few others. And just being able to get a sense of where we're going and where we've been, it's, I'm just really looking forward to that because we haven't been able to do this in how long now. So I could tell you a lot more about him. He's the co-founder of Measure. You obviously know him from the FAA Advisory Committee, the DAC. Um, lots more I could say about him, but why don't I bring him out here and he'll tell you himself. So please join me in welcoming Brandon. Appreciate it. Brandon, as you heard, that was the briefest of, of bios for you. Maybe you could tell the audience a little bit more about your past and Ag Eagle. Sure. Um, so I started doing the math, and it's been about eight years uh, in, this, in the industry and seen quite a bit of changes uh, from my days starting uh, the original measure, which was a drone services company back in early uh, 2014 with this idea of providing you know, big enterprise customers with a, with a turnkey solution. So um, you know, raised some money on that and um, rapidly gained some experience in doing things like infrastructure inspection across you know, a number of different verticals, agriculture, energy, construction, and the like. Um, found that the technology is moving way quicker than anyone ever anticipated, and, and things are just becoming a lot easier to fly autonomously. So, you know, put a lot of that experience in developing our software platform, Ground Control, and uh, ultimately uh, sold off the services business. But I've kind of seen it all in the past eight years. Uh, it, it's so good to see uh, so many people that uh, I've known for, for years now uh, in this space here at Commercial AV. So thanks to Commercial AV and to you for inviting. Yeah. No, well, and speaking of, of seeing it all, you know, we've heard for, for how many years now about the, the potential of this industry, the revenues there, and this hockey stick growth. And I know, you know that's something Ag, Ag Eel's been talking about. So like, what makes what, makes what you're able to, to measure with this market or, or call out with it different than, than in, some, in some of those, those past conversations that, that we've heard at, at industry events? Sure. I, I really think it's, it's incumbent for all of us to understand we're, we're really past this proof of concept stage. Uh, I think that um, for too long, um, you know, a lot of uh, customers, and again, across a number of different verticals, have just kind of been dipping their toes in the water and e experimenting. And I think we're, we're, we're way past that now. Um, and, and, and frankly, um, what we're facing now is, is not a uh, technology problem. In my opinion, the technology has been proven safe. Um, many of you have done you know, thousands of commercial operations safely uh, in the United States. It, it's frankly, uh, the technology is, is there. It's ready to go and ready to deploy today. Uh, the issue has always been regulation. But um, you know, as, the, as the administrator said, they're, they're doing the best they can. But remember, the FAA moves at what I would call the speed of bureaucracy, right? And you, 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 can't, you can't really speed up uh, the bureaucracy necessarily. But I think that um, my, my perspective um, at Ag Eagle is that you know, we want our customers to kind of double down on their commitment to the technology. Now is really the time uh, to do that because I think many of us in this room, um, including my team at Ag Eagle, have already you know, figured out this is how we can leverage the technology, this is how we can deploy it at scale, um, even in the current regulatory environment, even without BV loss, even without um, remote ID. And so is that understanding of, of deploying the technology at scale, is that, is that what makes you guys different than, from, than some of these other companies in the past that have talked about this hockey stick growth that, that frankly, some of them aren't, aren't around sure. anymore? No, I, I think um, this industry has had its ups and downs. I, I really think it's on the upswing now. I, I truly believe that um, what's important is real world experience um, and being able to demonstrate to customers and, and to the FAA and our, our regulator that these things can be done and can be done safely. And so, you know, in the past eight years, like I said, as, as part of Measure and now as part of Ag Eagle, having done, you know, tens of thousands of commercial operations, gives you a little bit of experience and insight into where potentially the industry is going moving forward. 
and of course, what it is that customers ultimately want. Um, so I think that is a big differentiator for us at Ag Eagle right now. Yeah. And can we talk a little bit about, I mean, digging into some of those, those verticals and, the, and that agriculture sector? Obviously, I mean, it's still in the brand for, for you guys. Can you talk a little bit about how the technology is making a difference from a practical perspective there? how that's being reflected in the market, and then even with the upcoming, I mean, how many times we read about the headlines of food shortages and yeah. what it's gonna take for, for agriculture to, to meet these demands? Yeah, well, first, look, I'm super excited. We launched a product here at the show. Uh, we're putting out two new multispectral cameras specifically focused on the agricultural space. But I think, you know, more strategically, as I, as I think about where we can address some real challenges in the real world, is look, we're here in Las Vegas. Um, you know, the, the drought is here, climate change is happening. Um, I think our customers, you know, across a number of different verticals, but in particular on agriculture, where, you know, it is, it is heavily dependent on water, heavily dependent on uh, crop yields, is the technology is proven. Uh, the, the sensors that we produce at Ag Eagle via Micasense uh, work to help, you know, identify problems with crops. And ultimately, identifying those problems early or better managing water leads to increased crop yields. And so I, as I think about, you know, moving forward, Ultimately, ag is going to always have a kind of central space uh, at our company, and, oh, and I think in this industry, because it's been proven time and time again that using the imagery and the data that's collected by drones in the ag space makes a difference. And can you talk a little bit about how some of those, those real world differences are similarly applicable in, in spaces like construction or, or energy, and how that's made a practical difference for those organizations? Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, when I think about the other verticals that we're focused on, energy, uh, construction, um, and, e and even in government, I think the key ultimately is, look, um, you're dealing with a, a flying camera that's collecting high quality data. Ultimately, um, how that data fits into the process that a customer may have, whether they're a big, you know, uh, construction company like Skanska or, or a company like Syngenta, uh, that's, that's really key, right? Um, generally speaking, um, and, and someone may correct me if I'm wrong, but it's not, not too difficult to, to, to buy the drone you, you want and need, to, uh, to fly it you know, safely in, in the United States or you know, practically anywhere. The challenge really is you know, the old adage of you know, dealing with the SD cards and taking all those images and actually making something practical uh, for the customer that is gonna allow them to take some action that either saves them money or improves the process. And that is where, you know, in my opinion, the kind of the, the, the rubber meets the road. So, you know, the things that we've learned, uh, you know, at the team as, as a commercial operator, whether it was an ag construction, we're obviously, you know, feeding into our, into our software development and feeding into kind of a, uh, an aggressive kind of research and development cycle that we're going through at Ag Eagle. And is there a better, under, and when you go out into the field and talk to some of these end users, is there a better understanding of what a drone is? I feel like for, for a while there it was the drone is this cool thing that's going to do all these, these different things, but it, a better understanding is as you just talked about, like sure. this is a tool that captures data and... So, so I often make this kind of joke, it's like, oh, you know, a couple years ago, you, you still got that, um, that excitement from a new customer when you went out and did a demo, right? I think... Uh, Oh, look, drones. Um, but now it, it seems to be obviously more ubiquitous. Uh, people obviously feel a lot more comfortable that the technology is going to work and provide value. So um, like I said, I, I, I think that uh, it, it's incumbent on all of us uh, to push, um, push the deployment of the technology. I think um, you know, whether it's an infrastructure inspection or it's in agriculture, uh, it's, t it's time for people to make those real investments. Um, and when I say people, I mean you know, people here um, who are providing uh, those solutions, but also the end users. Um, you know, there's nothing really that should be holding end users back from deploying at scale. I, I really don't, I really don't um, see any barriers to that. And you, know, you guys did a, a performance test capability not too long ago that showed it was 99% it was accurate versus the, the traditional yeah. inspection methods. And I wanted to see if you could talk a little bit about what kind of a difference it can make with end users when you can talk about things like 99% and oh, and it, it finished in two days instead of two weeks or what it was. You can correct me with the, with the details. But you know, anytime you talk about adoption, there's always challenges with, ah, oh, that's gonna cost a lot, we gotta do something different. But when you can talk about 99%, like that, I got to imagine that that changes perspectives. Yeah, I, I think uh, what you're really focused on is this idea of you know saving time. Time is money, um, and to companies that have requirements to do infrastructure inspection, 
um, you know, let's say a solar farm, for example. And that's the, what you're referencing is a, is, is a study we actually did with a company called AES uh, to inspect solar panels with drones. We did this a couple years back. Um, obviously, they wanted to make sure that they could capture the same, the same data as someone who would potentially be walking and doing that process manually. And, and what we demonstrated, obviously, was that the data we collected was as good as the, as the data collected the normal way. And frankly, it was better because we did it in hours as opposed to days. Um, and so when you start uh, demonstrating that type of savings and efficiency for customers, regardless of the work or application, I think uh, people get excited. And they say, OK, this makes sense. This is something we should be doing. And is, there, and is there an understanding for some of those end users in terms, of, in terms of being able to take that efficiency and drop it into what I'm doing or knowing how they've got to get in and customize that? Like, where does the rubber meet the road in terms of, okay, I saw you guys do this here, but like, how does it work for me? Yeah, so um, that's interesting because, you know, it, we talk a lot about drone applications, whether it's wind turbine inspection, solar farm inspection, you know, flying uh, to collect information on, on farms. But you know, the funny thing is, is that all customers are somewhat different. Even if um, you're dealing with a company that you know, owns a ton of infrastructure, let's say it's wind turbines or solar farms, they're not all, I mean, they are looking for problems on that infrastructure, but how they manage that process or how they manage their infrastructure sometimes is unique uh, from customer to customer. So yes, you may be able to kind of fly the drone and, 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 and use the same software, but ultimately, how, how that data is getting into that customer's, like I said, that customer's process for managing that infrastructure is probably just as important, and it's not necessarily the same. So, you know, we did, um, you know, integration with AES and their SAP uh, Enterprise Resource Management System, which is, which is what they're using for their infrastructure. That requires some, some custom work. That wasn't as easy as, hey, everything works automatically out of the box. Um, and so, as you think about where the rubber meets the road and, and how we get, um, you know, how we see the type of scale and, and growth that we want is listening to the customer and, and figuring out um, how their existing process works. Because I think oftentimes what we've kind of fallen down is believing that we can create a whole new process, right? A whole new stovepipe. Um, and that's not necessarily where I think the technology is gonna fit in. I think it gets layered in to existing processes that, that companies have for, for managing their assets. And if we do that, I think we're more likely to get faster adoption. I mean, do you feel that's been a challenge in the past and that some of those companies I referenced that, that aren't around anymore, that they were saying, we've got this whole new thing and you've got to do this whole new thing now? Yeah, dr look, dr drones are a tool. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're one of many tools that I think our customers are going to use. So, uh, you know, um, yes, I think, trying to tell a customer that everything they're doing today doesn't work <laughs> and saying, actually, here's the, here's the piece of software, the piece of hardware here's that's going to solve all of your problems is probably not the best pitch um, because a lot of these companies um, have been doing this for quite some time um, and, and have an understanding of how uh, their, their assets need to be managed. But I mean, that, that ties back to these, to these market predictions because that pitch, I feel, is what, would, what would, was the underlying some of those predictions in the past. And what, we're, what Ag Eagle has laid out is, is something that is being predicted on this, this scale that you're seeing. Yeah, I, I think as you, you know, and I've been at you know, Ag Eagle now as CEO since, since May, so, so still early days, um, much different than, than running, running a private company. But I think moving forward, you're, you're gonna see from us and, and other companies uh, in our space in, investing really heavily in R&D, um, and, and, and going to our customers and say, okay, how do we help you take what is a modest program, and a modest program could be you know, 100 pilots, 100 drones, to something that you know, scales into the thousands. And that's, that's where we need, to all, we need to all go. And again, I think our pitch, at least at Aggie, is gonna be more about let us, let us integrate into whatever process is working for you right now. Um, I, I, I don't profess to understand how to manage wind turbines or, or solar farms per se, but I certainly can, can provide a solution that makes it easier to do that. And how do you see some of what we've, what we've talked through here either impacting or further defining some of those, some of those market predictions? Is it that once, once some of this comes to pass, those, those numbers will, will, be, will be true, or is it that once, once 
some of the scales rolled out that they'll, they'll be that much bigger. So I don't, you know, it, it, I was listening to the administrator and, and, and I know everyone here, uh, well, I'm excited about BV loss. I know the administrator is excited about BV loss, but ultimately, um, you know, is that the catalyst that leads to the type of, you know, hockey stick or explosive type growth that we expect? Maybe. I don't think it's, I don't think it's, it's guaranteed to ensure that uh, the industry grows uh, as quickly as we'd like it. Um, that being said, it's an important step um, for, for many of us who've been talking about beyond visual line of sight operations for, for years. And particularly in the kind of the exciting areas of drone delivery, uh, whether it's you know, COVID vaccines or you know, medicine, I think there's a tremendous amount of exciting things that are happening there. But you know, at the end of the day, I think you know, BB loss gets really exciting because um, you can really start doing things where you know, you've, you're currently using helicopter, very expensive helicopters, for example, or, or satellite imagery that just doesn't have the resolution that you'd like to do transmission lines, for example, inspection. Um, and I think the, the old adage that we're in the business of dirty, dull, and dangerous things is, is, rings true. I know drone delivery is very exciting, but ultimately, you know, I've been out there, you know, 45 minutes out of Waco, Texas in the summer watching, you know, my pilots do wind turbine inspections. Not very sexy, but it gets, you know, it's providing real service yeah. to, uh, to the customer. Yeah. So we're coming up on the end here, and we've obviously got a lot of different people from throughout the, the ecosystem in this room here. So I, I know it's tough to say, like, what's a good uh, advice on next steps for somebody who might be just considering a drone program versus yeah. somebody who's here to, to make it that much more efficient. But, you know, what, what, what advice do you have for, for people that are, that are looking to kind of move forward in this space? Well, I think, I think you know, I'll put, and I probably shouldn't do this, but there's probably two buckets. There's end users, and then there's kind of all of us who, who, who work with those end users to provide a, to provide a solution. I think for, for end users, my, my call to action is uh, let's not wait. No need to wait anymore to make real investments in drone technology and deploying it at scale. Uh, I think we have proven the value time and time again. People have done the math. We've done the math. There's plenty of my colleagues in this industry that have done the math that show the cost savings, that show the value. So now is the time to kind of step up and, and really make those investments. For, you know, for the providers of products and solutions, um, I'd say, look, keep innovating. Keep innovating. Um, I think that you know, this is still an industry. I know we all talk about autonomy, but pilots and people are still an incredibly important part of this industry. Um, and so I think oftentimes in, in the glamour of the autonomous future, we lose sight of the, the human factor, the people uh, who are still out there today on the sticks. And so remembering that uh, there are still real people and real pilots out there in the field who are hard at work uh, collecting the data. So keep innovating, but you know, if you're an end user, let's, let's, let's double down. Well, I mean, I love that message of don't wait, because for many years it was, don't wait, but you know, there's, still, there's something else coming, or something's yep. going to change. So there's a reason to wait. But I mean, you've proved the results are there. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you can wait however many years and, and get whatever results. But I mean, if you wait, you're not going to be able to build on something that you're doing today. Yeah, and I, I think generally, what, you know, everyone wants to say, oh, well, let's wait for remote ID. Oh, let's wait for BB loss. It's always going to be waiting on the regulation to catch up. And, and so if, if you're waiting on regulations to catch up, you're just going to be waiting. And I, don't, I couldn't tell you how long. And, and waiting while other people are, are doing and innovating and then have a foundation that they build on when things change with regulation. Exactly. I mean, there's, there are companies that we work with today that have, been, you know, that have run, been running significantly sized drone programs for years. And there are others who are simply still kind of dipping their toes in the water and you know, saying, look, we're going to wait till the regulations become more clear. Good luck. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Brandon, best way to continue the conversation with you and with Ag Eagle to find out more info? Um, yeah, uh, most people know how to find me. Uh, you could, you could you know, shoot me an email, find me on, on the various social media outlets, but um, eager to talk to uh, my colleagues here and, and just want to say to folks, um, I think the future is bright. I think there's tremendous opportunity and uh, best of luck to everyone. Brandon, thank you for joining us today. Thanks, everyone.